What might surprise you is that many Special Forces units can trace their roots back to the UK's Special Air Service, or simply SAS. One such unit heavily influenced by the SAS is Delta Force, Tier 1 Special Forces of the US military. This raises the question, how similar are Delta Force and the SAS? How are they selected and trained? What type of weapons do they use? And, most importantly, which unit is better? Join us as we explore these two globally respected special operations forces in this ultimate showdown, Special Air Service versus Delta Force. Established in 1941 by British Army officer David Sterling, the SAS originated in North African deserts during World War II. Sterling had a daring vision to outfox Germans in North Africa. He devised a strategy involving small parachute teams to infiltrate enemy territory, collect intelligence, sabotage, and disrupt supplied routes. After presenting his bold idea to his high command, the SAS was given the green light. At the beginning, the SAS was called L Detachment Special Air Service Brigade. But don't let the term brigade fool you. The SAS started with just five officers and around 60 soldiers. This was a deception strategy to confuse the enemy into believing there were thousands of SAS troops. During World War II, the SAS proved highly effective in Africa, the Mediterranean, Northwest Europe, and notably D-Day. After the Great War, the SAS was disbanded briefly, but was later reformed, paving the way for the modern SAS as we know today. Over the years, the SAS earned a global reputation, taking part in high-stakes missions like the Iranian Embassy Siege, Gulf War, and the War on Terror. Their motto, Who Dares Wins, reflects their fearless spirit and has set a standard for others to follow. Delta Force was formed in 1977 in response to various terrorist incidents. Charlie Beckwith, a Green Beret and Vietnam War veteran, worked with the British Army's 22nd Special Air Service during the Malayan Emergency. Beckwith believed the US Army lacked a dedicated unit for direct action and counterterrorism, unlike the US Army Special Forces, which mainly trained and assisted local fighters. Beckwith had a vision of creating small teams that could adapt and work on their own for special missions. He shared his idea with his superiors, but they were reluctant to make any changes. Finally, in the mid-1970s, as the threat of terrorism grew, the Pentagon and Army appointed Beckwith to form the unit. On November 19, 1977, Beckwith and Colonel Thomas Henry officially formed Delta Force. They selected the initial members from volunteers and them through rigorous training to assess their physical fitness, endurance, and mental toughness. It took almost 18 months to finish the training course. By the autumn of 1979, Delta Force had become mission ready. The UK Special Forces don't recruit from the general public. They accept applications from UK Armed Forces. However, historically, most of the candidates comes from the Royal Marines or Parachute Regiment. In October 2018, they opened SAS recruitment to women. The selection process takes place twice a year. Typically, only a small fraction, around 10% of candidates successfully pass it. The initial phase lasts for four weeks in the Brecon Beacons with around 200 candidates. They kick things off with a fitness test, like 50 sit-ups, 60 push-ups, and a 1.5 mile run. Then, the march 8 miles in 2 hours, carrying a 25 pound load. By the end of this phase, they gotta run 4 miles in under half an hour, and swim 2 miles in an hour and a half. In 2015, a young recruit died during the exercise just a quarter mile from the end, at a location known as VW Valley. Two other soldiers also died that day, leading to an inquiry. It became even more challenging with the grand finale, a grueling endurance test that requires them to march 40 miles with full gear and conquer the Pennyfan Mountain within 20 hours. Next, they jet to places like Belize, Brunei, or Malaysia for jungle training, where they learn navigation, patrol, and survive in the wild. Once back in the UK, it's time to study battle plans, foreign weapons, and go through combat survival drills. The whole thing wraps up with a week of escape and evasion training the candidates are split into teams, given a tin can of survival gear, and dressed in old-school World War II uniforms. Their mission? Reach a specific spot by sunrise. The final test, known as Resistance to Interrogation, focuses on teaching candidates how to withstand 36 hours long interrogation. The Delta Operator selection process takes place twice a year and lasts four weeks at Camp Dawson in West Virginia. To apply, you need to be a male with high score on a military aptitude test and have at least two and a half years left in your military service. You also must be eligible for a secret level security clearance and have a good behavior record. 
The process starts with the physical tests like a two mile run, an inverted crawl, and a 110 yard swim while wearing full gear. After that, candidates go through land navigation courses, including an 18 mile night hike carrying a 40 pound backpack using only a paper map and compass. The final challenge is the long walk, a 40 mile march over tough terrain with a 45 pound backpack. There's also a mental part with psychological exams. It's really tough, and most candidates, about 90%, don't make it through the selection. Once SAS recruits survive the tough selection process and earn their SAS wings, they enter a training phase that never really ends. A substantial portion of their training revolves around counterterrorism, conducted at a facility known as the Killing House. Here, SAS troopers practice their close quarter battle skills. They perfect techniques for entering rooms using stun grenades, tear gas, and breaching walls and doors. They learn landing on rooftops, getting access using ladders or explosives. The SAS are extensively trained in storming hijacked trains and aircraft. One crucial part of special ops work is sneaking into enemy territory. SAS recon teams learn to hide from the enemy for days, sitting quietly in concealed spots. During this phase, the troopers learn espionage skills as well. The SAS are trained to sneak deep into enemy territory to sabotage. In close protection course, the troops learn to protect VIPs. Delta Force training is among the toughest in the world. After making it through the selection, recruits face a six-month operator training course, split into six parts. First up is marksmanship, where they start by shooting stationary targets up close, then move to moving targets, and eventually learn how to clear rooms full of enemies. Next comes demolition and breaching in the second block. They get into stuff like lockpicking, making improvised explosive devices from everyday stuff, and setting up sniper positions around buildings. In the third block, they combine all their skills from the first two and use them in direct action, counterterrorism, and hostage rescue operations. The fourth block is all about espionage, with CIA instructors teaching things like dead drops, quick meetings, secret signals for loading and unloading, surveillance, and how to spot someone tailing you. Block number five is about executive protection, where Delta operators learn how to protect VIPs. Finally, they wrap things up with a big test called culmination exercise, where they must put all their skills they've learned to the test. Both units have access to a wide range of firearms. They train with various military weapons from around the world, including Kalashnikovs. Having a good understanding of these weapons is crucial because they might be called upon to teach foreign troops. In emergencies, both units may need to use enemy firearms found on fallen enemies during escape and evasion missions. In false flag operations, they deliberately opt for firearms associated with another force to conceal their own identities. The primary rifle used by the SAS is the HK-53, and when things get up close, they rely on the MP5, a compact submachine gun and Glock 17. Delta Force usually goes into action with an HK-416, M4A1 carbine, and the M249 machine gun squad automatic weapon. The Deltas are armed with MP7 submachine guns and a bunch of sniper rifles. But here's the cool part, these guns are super customized to suit each operator's style. They tweak things like the stock, grips, sights, and other parts to make them just right. Plus, they use the latest tech gadgets for info and precision strikes. At the end of the day, both Delta Force and SAS are all highly professional and capable special operations forces. Neither Delta Force nor SAS holds a clear advantage over the other. They both boast impressive histories in warfare and bring valuable expertise to the world of special operations. But we're curious, which one do you favor? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below.